Hello there, it's Sarah from Paper Lovely. Thanks for joining me today. I'm gonna to show you how I created this case file Valentine's Day card. And I'm starting here with a base. This is from Miss Sparkle & Co. It's a five by seven craft card base. And I'm going to turn this into a file folder. So I'm working on the back section of my card. That's where I want my tab to be. I'm gonna line up the corner with the bow guideline and I'll punch that using my envelope punch board. Then I'm gonna line up the edge with the three inch mark and I'll go ahead and punch that again. And these are the basic instructions so far that come with the punch guide to show you how to make a file folder card. I changed mine slightly from here. So I'm gonna take this to my trimmer and I'm gonna trim off that bottom portion so I'll just have the tab sticking out the edge there. And then I have to deal with the front of my card. I need that to be slightly smaller so that you can see the tab. So I'm gonna take that and I will trim a half an inch off of that side. And there you have the basic file folder. I'm gonna go back to my punch board then and I'll just use the corner rounder to round the other three square edges. And now, because I'm crazy for detail, I pulled out my scoreboard and I'm gonna line this up making sure that I have that score line directly in line and I'll do three eighth inch scores on either end of the main score line to just give it a little bit more of a file detail, make it look a little more realistic. So now I'm going to create some Polaroids to stick in my file. This guy is guilty. He's been caught in the act, there's no doubt. Uh, so I have measured down this white cardstock. This is MFT Smooth White. And the base is going to be 3 by 2 and 3 eighths. I'm trimming out four of those here. And then to make the square, the actual picture, I'm going to have this, uh, the scene is set at nighttime, so I'm using MFT's Night Shift Blue, and I'm trimming those squares to 2 and 1 8 by 2 and 1 8, and then here you'll see I'm checking just to make sure that my measurements uh, work together. And I'll again cut out four of those. Here's a quick look at the stamps that I'm going to be using. This is by Hero Arts, and when I saw those raccoons, I absolutely had to grab them. The expression on his face is just overwhelmingly guilty and just so adorable at the same time. So I'm going to use all four of these images in my photos. I'm just lining these up here. I'm using some Bristol cardstock because I'm going to use my uh, zig markers to color that in. And I'll stamp these out using Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink. Here's a quick look at the coloring I did. I sped this up quite a bit since the colors for raccoons are fairly basic, um, but I will list the exact colors that I used on my blog post for you.
Okay, so I've gone ahead and fussy cut out all four of those images. I did go really closely to the black line on these and then I took my memento uh, black tuxedo black marker and went around the edges to make sure I caught any of the extra white pieces that might be hanging around there. I'm going to create the bases for my scenes and I decided I wanted to do two on cement or sidewalk and then uh, two on grass. So I'm using again cardstock from MFT. The gray is steel gray and the green is elf green. And I've just placed down some ATG gun there. I'm using scraps, so I just added that along the bottom and then trimmed off the excess. I wanted to make sure I got a nice stick with these elements because there were going to be the two different layers of cardstock. So I'm running these through my Xyron Create a Sticker Machine. This works so great, I don't know why I don't use it more often. It's such an easy way to fully coat the back of something that's cut out. Um, but there you'll see I'm just removing the little bit of extra sticky that can sometimes um, go around those edges that are sort of cut in. And I'm going to go ahead and place each of these down on my four scenes. So now I'll complete my Polaroids. I'm going to add a TG gun to the back of all four of these. And then I'll just place them up at the top of my Polaroid background, just making sure I keep an even edge around the top and the sides. Now I'm going to create some inside panels for my file folder and I've trimmed this out of Nina cardstock these. I measured to have about a quarter of an inch around all four sides, not including the tab. Um, so this measures six and three quarters by three and three quarters. I'll add some ATG on the back there and then uh, place those on the inside of my card. Now I wanted to make this look like this file has been used and worked with and what I really wanted was sort of a coffee mug uh, ring and I didn't have anything like that in my stash and to use any coffee mugs I actually had were just gonna be too big for the size of the project. So I pulled out this splotch from Your Next Stamp and the name of that stamp set is Paint Swatches and Splatters and I stamped that using Hero Arts Cup of Joe. And then I wanted to fill my file with some paperwork so it looked like, you know, it was full and they had lots of evidence. So I went through trying to find some things that looked like they would work. I ended up pulling from this Project Life Pad and this is called Inked Rose. So I grabbed a couple of those sheets. I really wanted to use that yellow one and then I ended up, it just, I couldn't make it work. So I did go with the blue and the grid paper and I attached that there using my uh, Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher. Played around with that uh, yellow piece again and then finally just decided to get rid of it. 
And then I wanted to add a little bit more red on the inside since this is a Valentine's Day card. So I also stapled on that heart ticket. And then for the bottom of this Polaroid, I'm gonna use, this is one of the sentiments that came with the raccoon stamp set. And I'm gonna stamp uh, Be My Valentine. I'm using Lawn Fawn Lobster Ink for that. Then I decided I needed something on that file tab. So I grabbed the You Stole My Heart sentiment and I'm gonna stamp that out using the Hero Arts Cup of Joe. Uh, that way it will match the um, stain that I have on the front of the file folder there. Okay, so now for the finishing touches, I am just going to curl the edges on all of these Polaroids and lay them out. I played around with them a couple different ways. And then once I was happy with my layout, I went ahead and flipped them over and I just added three strips of this half inch score tape behind each one of them. I wanted to make sure to give uh, those edges lots of room to be able to crinkle and curl. And the one on top there of him in the trash can, I did just leave that paper clipped, so um, he can come on or off. If I, if I end up mailing this card, I may stick a glue dot or something underneath there just to make sure um, that it stays on for when it's actually pulled out of the card. But for now, I think the clip is working all right. And then as I went to put this picture down, I realized uh, I couldn't put it over top of those, otherwise they wouldn't flip the way that I wanted them to. So I just tucked them underneath there. It's easy enough to lift those up to see the full picture. And then for this last one, I think it worked out well to sort of put him in the center and then you can write your note uh, around the picture. For the last touch, I am taking my uh, Uniball White Signo Gel Pen and just adding some stars in the background of all of these. And here is a final look at the card. Additional photos as well as a full list of supplies can be found at my blog post linked in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, please leave me a comment or a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.